you're watching an episode of Shiftcast. You can catch the full episode on our YouTube channel or on Spotify. Let's get right into it. Mm. Yeah, duck in the smoke. It's whatever. I was right. You're wrong. It's cool. <laughs> Hold, um, on. Hold on. About what? Shout out to the coin for screwing us. We had we predicted the correct final and we flipped a coin because someone's a fence sitter, even though I knew in their heart of hearts they wanted to pick an A. <laughs> no, if I, um, I did not want to, if the coin could have saved us, I wanted to go Falcons. Um, but listen, uh, I obviously spent uh, last week yapping, yapping the audience's ear off about my thoughts and Bel Air's thoughts. Thank you again to Bel Air for coming on. Just a, a pleasure. Your thoughts um, on the NBA, that is. Yeah, dude, it was awesome. <laughs> I had the time of my life. <laughs> talking about the nba finally with another ball nor but i want to give you guys the floor uh but your perspective of the major because your perspective of the ma- i had the same perspective of the major as most people I was watching it via twitch.tv slash rocket league or the youtube stream um but you guys were both there and in very different capacities jens was there as a media member as he was in copenhagen and hootie was running the team stream for oxygen uh, who had you know the most content run uh, you could have had without actually qualifying so we'll go around Tough. and um, we'll, we'll, I want to hear from you guys about your experiences, uh, you know, given your perspective. So, Jens, um, first of all, you've been to a London land before. That's and you right. went as a fan. So what's the, right. what was the difference yeah. like being in the copper box? Being that, it's it's being, an entire know. world of difference. I mean, uh, this time I actually spent some time actually seeing London, doing some <laughs> sightseeing, being a tourist for a little bit. Because two years ago I was there for the first time. I wasn't in London for uh, London 1.0 at uh, season five finals. Unfortunately, I had exams mm. with the This Is Rocket League moment. I was not there, but it was there two years ago um, for the spring major, wasn't it? Is, hold on, hold on, question, question. Is Jens yeah. Falcon's good luck charm? <laughs> I guess He's been so. Two only, London only majors to a certain level final. though. Yeah, it gets you there. Okay, you gotta win one series. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there's there's something, but I mean, I'm already happy that we got the finals, right? Yeah, yeah. That we predicted that. I mean, that's out of all the contenders there were. I mean, yes, BDS in on the days were quite disappointing, but they came in looking really, really good. So, mm-hmm. but yeah, it's so different to experience it as a fan, which I really recommend. I mean, everyone says it, but honestly, two years ago was already. I don't know. I think it was my fourth or fifth land that I attended. Um, I'm lucky to live somewhere in Europe where you can just catch uh, a train or a plane to places. Uh, I mean, sometimes the, the planes are cheaper than the trains, which is really annoying. Like moving to Rotterdam by train is more expensive than flying to Madrid, even though I live in Belgium, which is like an hour away from Rotterdam. Oh. It, it's it's yeah crazy, but yeah. As a fan, I was there to meet all my friends two years ago. Like the games were nice. The games were fun that they were happening, but I was there to see all my mates, you know, all the British people that I've been talking to online for so long that some of them I've already met at other uh, LAN events uh, and just to experience the whole ordeal together. We stayed in a, an Airbnb in Rumford, just a little bit out, out of London got there on, on the Elizabeth line and you're just there with the homies, you know? Mm-hmm. So it's great from that perspective. Um, being there as a member of the press, which is not a lot for Rocket League, which makes our jobs really easy. Because for a Counter-Strike event, I know that HLTV is, is the shift of Counter-Strike. Actually, we are the HLTV of Rocket League, but let's turn it around for once. And, but they have to compete with a lot of other esports media, a lot of other gaming media when it comes to the big Counter-Strike events. And for us, it's like maybe three other people who are there just with by themselves, mm-hmm. which is really fun because we get to do so much when it comes to interviews, when it comes to a- anything we need to do in the press room, which uh, is just a room a little bit off the side, out of the way of the, of the public, under the seats, basically under the arena which it was freezing there, by the way. Uh, it was it was quite a good temperature, kind of warm, but still good in the arena, but it was freezing in that press room. But you're sitting there, you have a screen to watch the games, but uh, with a little bit of delay, which is really funny because you hear people cheer in the <laughs> arena just two, doors, da- two yeah. doors down, and then you see the goal coming in. 
Uh, there was also a, one, a member of, I think, of Gentlemates uh, who was doing press as well. Uh, and he was sitting there watching the games on the Gentlemates stream in French. And he was he was ahead of the stream on, on, the, oh, no. on the TV that we had in the press room. So if we looked over his shoulder, we could actually see who scored first. <laughs> it, it was an interesting, interesting room to be in with, with these people working on interviews and everything. But you don't get to see much of the games. Really, you, you get to see some goals going in, but you lose track of what's actually going on in the tournament. Because you're already looking at who's going to win the next series. Of course, can't predict that. Sometimes you can see it going a certain way, but we've seen people coming back from behind. Uh, and and you, you ideally want to interview some, some of the winners. We also did some losers interviews this time, which I know a lot of people aren't really interested in doing because if you've lost obviously you're not in the best mood to go talk to some people wanting to ask annoying questions we try to keep it respectful we don't really go like what was wrong what how could you lose this no we're trying to talk a little bit about how the tournament run has been you know if they're made it to worlds how are they going to prepare for that what if they learn from this one all those kind of things um i arrived there on saturday so i had just two days uh, for for me to be there, although from home I could also help out on on the Friday, transcribing some interviews because we want to get it on the website on Shift Early .gg. So we have it as video this time. We had two lovely people mm -hmm. with cameras running around helping us out so much, uh, taking some pictures, but especially for the videos on our YouTube channel, but also embedded on the website. It, it was really great to have two angles to have everything going on, and even then, you know. You, you have some technical difficulties. This was the second time we actually did interviews on video. The first time was in Copenhagen and it was really a learning pro, pro uh, learning process there. Like the first day we lost like three interviews in a row because first the microphones weren't properly turned on, then the cable oh. wasn't properly connected. Uh, the third time, I don't even remember what went wrong, but it went wrong. And on the Saturday, I had a really good session of two interviews in a row with the winning and the losing coach. That was Casio from BDS and Eversax from Gentlemates. And both interviews were really good, but one of the microphones, actually, yeah, the microphone that we were using at that moment, we were just using one with the, with the, the basically it's the little Rode microphone yeah. built into a stick that we can use. But it was turned on, we checked that, but it was muted. <laughs> so no oh, audio, no. and then, yeah, I mean... Dude, you're giving me PTSD right now. Like, this it's... is just what, what odd AV production is. It's just, yeah. like, it happens, there's always you know, something. Yeah, you have to keep moving, get on to the next thing, because you can't linger over it. The next match is starting, and you need yeah. to prepare an interview. You need to write down the questions, brainstorm what you're actually going to ask, all that stuff. Um, but yeah, still a lovely time. I'm so sad about that Eversex interview. They were they won against BDS. They eliminated the first seed out of Europe, and they were looking good. They mm -hmm. were looking really good. Eventually, oh gosh, it yeah. turned out they were not even making to the, to the grand finals. But at, in that moment, of course, you don't know that. And the quotes that that I would have loved to use for a title for an article uh, from Eversex was that they were playing better than they were in Copenhagen when they won the whole thing. So that's that's I mean that's amazing to hear from. From their coach and honestly he was right they were yes they didn't make it to the grand finals and yes they didn't get another major win but they were playing extremely well on, on in those quarterfinals and before so yeah lovely to to see everyone to talk to so many people to get to do these interviews um you don't really get to see a lot of it in the venue like in the arena you don't really get to follow all the storylines that you usually do from home, but uh, it's still to be there in the arena with all those people. London has so much history around it as well. I mean, it's just it's just an amazing experience. Okay, Jens, I have a question because I got to pop yeah. into your um, like media room, and yeah. it looked Came sick. It looked so awesome. Like it was such a cool little space designated for press, yeah. and media, and stuff. You've done. You did. Um, Copenhagen, right? Did they have a similar setup for you guys there? Um, not really. 
Yeah. Copenhagen was an interesting venue because, well, obviously with Blast coming in and they didn't really have a lot of time to find the best venue. It right. was a very workable venue and they set up the stage really nicely. So especially watching from home, I can imagine it looked really good. But the venue itself, I mean, we've seen better for an RLCS major, which I mean, at the time it was fine. It worked. Yeah. Um, but it was uh, a rather small sized hall which meant that there wasn't really any room for a media True. room as well. So we actually got to use a room in the headquarters from the tennis club next door. Yeah, I remember you I, mentioning I that you were on the other, you were in a different building. We had to walk yeah. outside <laughs> to get back into a different door. So it was a different kind of room, a kind of similar setup with just a screen yeah. to watch the games. Um, uh, but... In that case, we couldn't really do anything other than have our own workspace there. True. And this time on the Sunday, Sundays are always different, of course, uh, because in this format, you have just three matches going on, right? On the championship Sunday, we've had that differently. We've had majors where you have the entire playoff bracket on the Sunday, which is really <laughs> incredibly busy. Awful. Terrible. And super long and kind of bad, yeah. Uh, but this for press is not ideal either okay. because it means you have the two semifinals and the losing teams are eliminated and right. they've just just gotten so close to the grand finals, lost, they want to go home. They don't want to talk to you, which, fair enough. Yeah, We didn't do that many losers interviews anyway. If we could, we did, we prepared them. But yeah, sometimes, you know, they're just not available and that's how it is. It's so it their like choice it to come by. It seems like it is more so than anything, probably like kind of venue restrictions. You know, if there's space for it, then they'll hook it up. And if not, then they'll try to make a workaround for it. Well, I ask because oh. I've got to tag along once with Jalen and yeah. it was for the DreamHack in San Diego, which I know DreamHacks mm -hmm. are different, but they didn't like, there was a, a separate room where we would go do post game interviews and stuff, but there was not a space where, like oh, but that's, were... that has to do with ESL running DreamHack, right? Right, versus now. And Blast yeah. doing it very differently. Because what we used to have for Rotterdam and, well, all the way back even, the first time I went to do press was in Madrid in 2018, mm -hmm. uh, December, for Season 8. Uh, what we used to have was just like a press conference style. Yeah, that's interview. what they had so at the World Championship. They brought, they team. Guided, brought the teams, yeah. all three players, plus coach, brought them to the press room, set them down in front of like the the big screen with all the sponsors or logos from RLCS right. on it. And then you were sitting there in the press room. So it wasn't just a working space. It was also the, the place where you would be asking all the questions and you, yeah. you'd go around all the people who wanted to ask a question, whether that's Lola doing some media or uh, Gigi Recon. Or there usually whatever. be local media there as well. Like sometimes too, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and especially these days, French media too. We've got uh, L'Equipe, yeah, yeah. the big French sports newspaper, which is really cool that they're covering it as well. Mm -hmm. With uh, Paul Arrivé. Um, but yeah, that's not how Blast does it. What they did for Copenhagen and for London this time is build a mixed zone, which is just off to the side of the stage which is basically right next to the floor in between two parts of the stands, right? Mm -hmm. So you have people sitting basically above or to the side of you. And then after the match, they turn on big lights to shine on this area with, again, a big, big screen with all the logos and everything on it. That's where, uh, well, this time Leaf did the interviews on stage, but in Copenhagen it was there as well. Uh, or this time it was also the post-game like highlights yeah, which were yeah. talked through by yeah. whoever it was, Jorby yeah. or CJ, or uh, I think Dazarin even did it once. Mm -hmm. um, so they would be doing the highlights there first, and then we would be waiting there, standing to get ready for our interviews because we would use the same space, which is really nice that we could use that kind of space because yeah, the yeah, lighting sure. is really good. Mm -hmm. The audio is a bit of an issue because you're right next yeah. to the crowd, yeah. which is really, really loud. So if there's something that, can be improved on well that's it but that's not how you do do it for the winner's interview for the winner's interview we did go back to the conference style uh interviews and brought right, yeah. g2 into the the press yeah, room yeah. Uh, and if you watch the video back you can see that they're all sitting down there 
So it's a very different different right. setup. So di yeah, okay, different style for blast than, yeah. than ESL. Yeah, for sure. And then of course there are some limitations that maybe. Yeah, uh, yeah and, and that's the, actually the only interview we did on Sunday, even though we prepared four more interviews, yeah. winners yeah. and losers for both semifinalists. Uh, but yeah, they they have to choose to go through that mixed zone, and usually they do. But after, on on the right, Sunday, right. the losing team was gone, and the winning yeah. team instantly wanted to go prepare for the grand finals. Right. Even the team that won the first semifinals, which still has quite a couple of hours until they actually need to play again. But yeah, they're, yeah, they're locked instantly in. locked in and gone. So I can't blame them. It right. is a little frustrating, but it is what it is. Right. Well, um, I guess, I mean, I'll just keep rolling. And, and what I'll do uh, initially is just kind of talk about some of the differences that I noticed um, mm. from my past experiences, whether it's fan or, or creator or whatever. Um, and I, I would just want to like highlight the biggest difference is, and I saw this discussion pop up for Worlds because they are selling, I don't know if y'all saw that, like the premium experience or whatever it is. Yeah, the box. Right. Yeah. Well, what it seems like is in the past, there has been a section called VIP and it is for players when they are eliminated it is for their families um it is for some content creators etc and some of these like i know people don't like that but like john sandman walking around the venue it, it's a problem because it just uh, you know a crowd forms and then you have this congestion and they can't move same with mm -hmm. sunless or musty or, or you know merchants. some of the creators. players too like i remember some of the players at, I, I at mean, fort worth right probably like, more so the players yeah um we were at fort worth watching like from afar i was yeah. in, i wasn't they let anyone in the vip they let me in the vip um i was walking out to go to the bathroom because i was not aware there was a bathroom in the vip area so i'd have to step out to go to somewhere else in the arena and as i was stepping out Right behind me was Arsenal. Now I remember that's like peak SSG, Rattles, Daniel yeah. Arsenal. Like they were the. He was still very popular right now. Yeah, right. Um, he was probably the most popular pro at that point, I would say. And as soon as he turned in front, like I was in front of him, I'm a bit, I'm like sizably taller than him. I'm probably like five, like six, six inches taller than him, not to flex. But I kind of <laughs> moved to the sides, go to the bathroom, and as soon as I moved, and the crowd kind of saw him. I was like getting bum rushed. Oh yeah. Like, there was a bunch of people who yeah. turned around and immediately went up to him. And I was actually, I had, I had trouble getting back in from the bathroom because uh, there was just a huge line that formed. Yeah. So it's actually insane. I don't think people fans really understand it because yeah. you, know, you may only see one or two pros the whole time, but anytime these really popular pros step out, they can't go anywhere. That's right. So on that note, they had a lounge that was labeled vip but there was ticket access sold to it so mm. it, oh. and and there was creator badges that could go into that lounge but players weren't allowed in that lounge their mm -hmm. their um necklace did, like that you know players couldn't go yeah. there so all they had for players player family etc there was an elevator to go up into the arena and to go down and, and like out you're like you know, staff exit, I guess. But then once you're in the arena, all that was reserved for those players and families, et cetera, was the top row around the bottom section. And then from there, you just had to deal with everything else. So the players were just in the venue like normal, like everyone else, which is fine. I don't want to pretend like they can't be there, but there was just no space to go watch the game without somebody constantly in mm -hmm. your ear and wanting a signature or whatever else. So that, and look, I'm not a huge creator. Like, that's not a problem for me. I can walk around fine. But the players, they just don't have a time. They don't have any time to breathe. You know, I mean, they, yeah. there's someone always, always by them, following them around. And, you know, with all due respect, I, I think there are occasions where maybe we don't pick up the social cues. Like, hey, I want to watch the game. Maybe, yeah. maybe we'll do the signature and then we move on and go back to our seat. Mm -hmm. And so... Like, I, I mean, I can tell you, and I'm not going to mention the player or anything like that, but I watched probably 45 minutes straight where this guy just would not leave this player and their family alone. <laughs> I just felt so sad because there was nothing to be done about it. And so that is one uh, big difference. And, you know, I don't want to sound like I'm spoiled and, and wish I had a space or anything, but I feel like for the players and their families, like their immediate player group, like there should be somewhere for them to sit 
and watch the games or even just watch on a screen or something where mm -hmm. they're not, you know, at, yeah. at, that, where they're not at risk for being bombarded constantly. Yeah, I didn't even really notice that. Well, m mostly because I didn't really go yeah. into the arena that much, you, probably. You were kind of tucked but down in the dungeon. We, it's, I think it's more to do with the venue than anything. Right. Right. Uh, because I think in Copenhagen, there was actually a section of the, the stands, which yeah, was Yeah, I remember reserved. you could see Seiko, like when they were doing crowd shots, you could mm. see, not Seiko, there was another pro who you could like literally see was like sitting on the floor in Copenhagen. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It's, like, watching I mean, it, it was, was like... very close to the KC fans, so it wasn't <laughs> ideal. <laughs> sure. Uh, but they, they, were, they had their own section where you couldn't really come in if you weren't a player yeah. or a caster or something right. like that. I so, assume yeah. they have it in Dallas too. It, Dallas it is a bit of the venue city. because yes, sure. you had just this one ring around the entire arena, which was kind of the top row, but it yep. did have a separate, it, th there was a divider. There like was. A there concrete was. divider between yeah. the normal seats, I would, I'd say, and then the, I guess the VIP seats, but they were just the same kind of seats. And you had they to were, get there that's through right. they the, were the- They were the same seats and they were- Through the, through the arena, so yeah. There's no-, there's no there's no there stopping no anyone else. Entrance to, or exit. Exactly. Yeah. Anyone yeah. could go sit down there if they wanted to. Yeah. And and it look, it's not a huge deal. We're not we don't have like crazy super celebrity stars. Yeah, that's we're still a, a small well. community. Yeah, I didn't I but didn't I, go, I do no. I do think uh I well, I know the players and their families would would certainly appreciate, you know, some space right. to just exist and watch. It the is matches. completely impossible to have this in some other esports. Like yeah. the yeah. CS pros, the League yeah. of Legends pros, I they can't are imagine, man. Us. Yeah, they, yeah. They couldn't. The league, well, the league thing, especially in Asia, it's like you can't let some like and you actually and like would a, not be able to like. Buy it's a genuine safety the hazard. Like it's a problem. Yeah. Well, yeah, but also it's from the players' perspective. They are way more demanding when it comes yeah. to that sure. kind of thing. I mean, it's some of the league difference. guys are getting paid millions of dollars a year right. to play the game, and you're going mean, yeah, to tell me I got to sit level next there. To this guy? There's yeah, a bit larger. Well, I mean, I think maybe I've told told this anecdote before, but it was um. In COVID era, the ESL guys were running uh, the first LAN in, in, in COVID era was in Stockholm, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. And um, before that, they asked all the all the player managers or, or the region managers which of the players were smoking, so they knew who they needed to give like smoke passes to, so they could go on smoke breaks because it was really limited. How the players' movements was really limited because you yeah. needed to have separate and Mm -hmm. you know isolates everyone in covid times and then the regional managers were like uh nobody the average <laughs> age is like 16. yeah these are children. what are you talking about <laughs> nobody but th these these, are, yeah. these tournament organizers are used to right. players yeah, yeah being russian and... russian 27 year olds like... right exactly <laughs> very very different crowd a little different so I that mean... just to just to continue on that like comparison from former events to this one that is probably the biggest difference that i noticed um, just from kind of behind the scenes, I guess. Yeah. On that note, a huge upgrade, an insane uh, difference from the past was the streamer spaces. So we've seen in the past where they hook up, like say Rocket Baguette, um, mm -hmm. Rocket Street. Rizzo. Rizzo had his Rizzo at times, that's right. They'll give them like a real setup for like a casting booth. Like you mentioned earlier, the, the backdrop with the sponsors and everything. They've got these professional setups, professional lighting. It's all super nice. And then they've also had some streamer spaces where it's just, it's very nice. I'm not saying it's not nice, but it's like a, a headset that has the mic on it. Um, it's not the most, you know, it's like the, not the nicest headsets. Um, it's just, it's, get, it's, it's enough to get by is what I'm saying. But mm -hmm. this, uh, this setup was incredible. Like the quality was insane. I mean, I, I streamed and uh, some of the people were like, did you find a casting booth? I'm like, no, this is just what they're providing for everybody. So it was so wow. cool. They did a great yeah. job of like rotating because obviously you have like Chief Beef is there with Space Station. You've got Danger Taco with OG. Um, I was there with Oxygen. So you had different streamers and there was only two spots that were open because you did have Rocket Baguette the full time mm -hmm. and, and the Spanish mm -hmm. version of the stream as well. So there's two spots and they, and, and I can speak from a smaller streamer standpoint. It, it's nice that they were willing to rotate. I think it's very fair if they wanted to leave some of the larger streamers on there, there's no complaints from me. I, I definitely understand like what is going on here, but I thought it was very cool that they made time and, and kind of allowed slots for like when your team is live, that streaming space is for Oxygen or it's for Space oh Station. God. So Can I thought I that was very cool. Sorry. 
Yeah, go. Sorry, this is a this is a side. So I didn't know that until you just told me that. Yeah. And um, after Oxygen beat Gen G, I went in your chat and I was like, bow down to Jason. <laughs> and then your stream just <laughs> cut. And I was like, oh, <laughs> did I piss Hootie off? Like, I feel so bad if you rage through the stream because I started like yelling about Michael ended the stream. No, actually, I was lying. Michael ended the stream. As soon as I saw the chat, I shut the computer down. And I afterward, I was like, I'm album. sure, yeah, I saw you come live on for the next one. And I was like, okay, it's going to be something. It's going to be something. But I was like, for that moment, I was like, oh, like, did I just get fired from my job? Amazing. Yeah, sorry, continue. What you uh, what you said is absolutely right. They they provided a lot for yeah. streamers, especially uh, previous events, Rocket Baguettes, and also in... in um, in Rotterdam, there was the Dutch uh, broadcast from uh, Rocket Benelux. They had to hi they had to rent their own uh, setups. Oh, really? Wow! All their they had to you know bring entire PCs and wow. so many monitors. Oh, my they had to arrange yeah. all that logistically themselves, which cost them quite a bit as oh, well. Yeah. But also, it's it's an entire you know logistical problem to get that all into the same all set up in a really tiny space. I have to say, but yeah. Uh, Blast are really thinking with the content. They yeah. know what yeah, that's right. what content creators need, and they're providing it, which is really cool. It's it's there's a lot of ups and downs because I've also heard that the players were really dissatisfied with their so, uh, setups in the hotel, in the practice rooms. The, yeah. their, the, in, the power was was out for a while. Um, <laughs> yeah, some of the rooms <laughs> that were set up for them were like something in Afterwards. between a change room and a bathroom. bathroom. Okay, that happened to us. So they were in the midst of scrims, and mm. um, it was just one of the converters. That's all it was okay. because they were using like American plug-in PCs. Oh right. And so I had that. Well, the converter blew and like lost power to the whole room. Ah, and nice. obviously we we're not about to start messing with it, so we just called people. It took a while for them to get up there. It was it was a simple fix, but you know they lost right. an hour and a half of scrim time. So yeah. they're gonna be frustrated. But yeah, there were I think some that, complaints there. That's but, another thing yeah. that I think is very much dependent on. The venue and and what's available with their space. Yeah, I was yeah. gonna say. I, I know we. I know it's a historic place for the esport. Copper Box sucks. We've had <laughs> enough Copper Box. It's a bad I don't venue. Think so. It's no. Old. <laughs> Every you time know I watch it, I'm like, this venue is awful. This venue <laughs> looks terrible, and it, and and there's always issues. I listen. I I respect it for what it is in our place in our beautiful game. I think we've had. I've ha I've had three, enough of having to three watch. Three times is great. Though. Yeah, try we can tie a a trilogy. On it, let's leave it move. There. Okay. No, I, all, I wholeheartedly disagree. <laughs> so I mean, all, you've been there, so you're probably with right, all the but... flaws that the venue might have. It's so you do admit it sucks, though. You admit like there... objectively, it's not a good venue. No, no, I think for for the whole experience that the Copper Box gives at, to the fans and everything, it is the right size for a Rocket League major, not for yeah, Worlds, okay. way too small. But it's this nice five to seven k that you can really fill up because if you make it bigger you might be able to sell more tickets especially yeah. if all the french teams know ahead of time and are qualifying and if they make it but um <laughs> the, the thing is also it is it is a really nice arena to make it loud to make it work with the stage it's great for that and it has so much history now that yeah. i kind of want to see it become this regular thing maybe not every year but the, uh, maybe uh, once every two years, we can come back to the home of Rocket League Esports, as some, as some yeah. people have already called it. Where you have IEM Katowice and the, and the Cathedral of Counter-Strike in Cologne. They return there every year. That's a bit much. But I would actually kind of like to see some places return to no, you know, I get agree. some history. I, I think that, I, like I said, if they're going to keep doing it, I'm not going to be like, oh, it's like whatever. I just personally... I, to me, yeah. the best venue that they've had, size, atmosphere, everything, was the one in Boston. The one in Boston looked amazing. It looked like the acoustics, like it felt super loud in there. Yeah. I would like well, that. Watching it from home, it was also probably the best NA land I've seen yeah, exactly. in terms of crowds. Like, so yeah. I see I see what you're saying in terms of like making sure like it's the right capacity. And there is a ton of history there, but Yeah, I get you. I get it's, you. It's it's like could we like I don't know. We I don't some know. The, I'm just some of the some of the practice rooms on site are just bathrooms converted. Yeah. Like I, I, like I think about LA, right? I've not heard that two years ago. So there must be another way around yeah, it. Yeah. Yeah. It well, was just I, I, planning, I guess. 
I think about LA, right? LA was probably the nicest accommodation, like the mm. like the like because it's a it's right in SoFi Stadium, and is I don't YouTube Arena or something. Yeah. yeah so what it is that is it's in so SoFi Stadium. It. SoFi Stadium is a state of the art. I've been yeah. to SoFi Stadium for a NFL football game. Mm-hmm. The dis the um the distance between SoFi Stadium and the second nicest sports arena I've ever been in is larger than the second nicest and the 20th nicest. It is yeah, an abs- yeah, it looks like a spaceship better. in there. Yeah. I've seen and the like Super Bowl had, there, I believe. Yeah, mm. yeah, exactly. Ago, and they so? have they they had their own practice rooms that were like actual rooms, rooms and stuff yeah. like that. But I think you're correct in the sense that it was only what a 2K cap and like that's just not enough for it's like an yeah. like a RLCS major anymore. Maybe like a shift shift summer league 24. Hey. Whoa. Like, like Whoa. Yeah. Like, I mean, 2K is what we had in Amsterdam in season two. That was back yeah, in 2016. Exactly. So, so it's like, different. I get why the cap matters. It's just that. Yeah. You know. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, no, no, no place is going to be perfect, but there, there's definitely but, some history. And, in and there's still and... a lot to learn for the production for Blast and everything. Sure. Big shout out to Paul Shepard, Paul Baye, who used to run, uh, along with colleagues, Rocket Benelux. Uh, he's a homie. And he's done so much to make this major more special as well. He was the one coming up with the idea of including the 104 with the legendary mm-hmm. crowd in the predictions. Love you know, the, with the the first when there was no crowd yet with the Discord server, and then afterwards with the actual 104 crowd holding up the signs to to predict mm-hmm. their winner. Not really predict, but more cheer on their favorites, mm-hmm. I guess. And he managed to get us uh, one or two of these cards. We could have get, gotten more, but it was hard to get. He he didn't get, get his hands on more. So um, I just used this with then some of the, these are the actual interviews that questions that I asked. If you're watching this on YouTube and I was just holding one of these cards like that. And then I could ask, Unreal. ask the interview questions like that. So <laughs> nice. yeah, it was lovely to, to have nice. someone like Paul Shepard, there's other people as well. But I have to shout out him because he was so involved with, you know, making the best of mm-hmm. what was going on at the, at the event. Yeah. Um, Hoodie, I want to ask you a question. Uh-huh. Um, so this was your first time outside of the United States? Second. It was in Dusseldorf. Second. I saw him yeah, in Dusseldorf. Yeah, we didn't talk. Sorry. First time I, in I've London. Seen you. Yes, yes. How was London the city? How did, was it as magical as in the movies? Um, <laughs> man, yeah. Like... I'm from Arkansas, so understand the bar is on the floor. Um, anytime I go anywhere in Europe, which I've only been to two cities, but I mean, it's just insane, dude. It's so incredibly different. Um, you know, I'm coming from a place where like public transport is not a thing. My first 27 years of life, I never got on a train or a tram. I didn't know what that was. Um, have you ridden, have you been on the underground? Yeah, now. Wow. Yeah, yeah that is an experience. But even Absolutely. even for me, who is used to trams and trains and everything, yeah. the tube in London is crazy. Yeah, yeah, for sure. No, it's super cool, man. I, I mean, like, so in Germany, I had one final flight from, I think, Frankfurt to Dusseldorf, the final connection. Um, and, you know, my, my flight from Chicago there is eight, nine hours. And while I'm in the air and I don't have service, it gets canceled. And then I'm landing, and this is my first time leaving the United States. I'm I'm worried, like, I know that I'll be able to find people that speak English, but is it going to be common? You know, I, I don't know what it's going to be like. It's no problem. I just get yeah, off the flight. Scary. I go to the desk, and they're like, all right, well, here's a train ticket instead. You'll be there in an hour and a half instead of an hour. I'm like, dude. <laughs> and that happens in America. You're just, like, stuck overnight, maybe two days. Yeah. You know, like, yeah. you're just screwed. And, 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 well, I shouldn't say all, but not always. I guess it depends on where you're landing, what airport and whatnot, but. It was just mind blowing for me, and it, it you know it's the same thing here. Like I get out of my plane, don't even leave the airport, load up onto yeah. a train for fifty minutes, and then I am in a ten minute walk to my hotel. Yeah, did, you've so... told me this story before, and immediately when you said you were taking a connecting flight from Frankfurt to Düsseldorf, yeah. there something went off in my head. Like, <laughs> wait, why would I... you fly there? <laughs> right, there's a train going straight from the one city to the other. Yep. So yeah, I mean, it, it really was wonderful. Like I said, the bar is on the floor for me. I, I just enjoy being able to walk out of the hotel and go get coffee, go get breakfast. And, and there are an abundance of different restaurants that you can go enjoy, different things that you can go do. I 
didn't take a t I was supposed to be there on Tuesday and I did have issues with my uh, travel there. So I got stuck in Houston overnight. So I lost a day there, but um, got there Wednesday, still a couple days early. So we did a little bit as far as like looking around, but mostly just the walkable stuff. I didn't really go to. You weren't like, sightseeing. Yeah, I didn't go sightseeing. You I just kind of like a whole lot. But yeah, the, the, you know, just just the walkability is crazy. Like, a you know, a city like that is so wild. And I, I, I want to say before anyone gets mad, I know we have that in America as well. I've experienced it in New York. It's very magical there. Uh, but Boston it, apparently is pretty good. Yeah, it, it's um, it's just a very cool experience. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's very different from what I'm used to. You know, there's there's people lounging, reading a book, laying on the on the lawn. It, it's very very different from from what I'm used to. So it was very cool. What was not very cool was our performance. That was not very. Speak cool. on it. So, Tell us about. I want. I want to. I want. What what was inside the mind of Hootie yeah, Who in yeah. that absolute highs and lows roller coaster that was the Bro. oxygen swiss okay so from a fan perspective a mega fan a hired fan if you will <laughs> uh Ronin. i'm sitting there and i'm looking at this this is a cinderella story you could not have you could not have built a better thing to to try to accomplish you have to go to the grand finals nothing less if you want a chance at worlds you have to go to the grand finals you've got a, a full english team well Oski's dual citizenship, but got a full English a roster. Man. We're in London. This, I mean, it's just, it's, it's magic waiting to happen. And it's London. Joyo, he's back. This is his, uh, you know, it, it's, it's his time to regain and put himself back on the map. This is, you know, you, you, you saw the, uh, or read the interview from Shift. I think he's very high on his current teammates. Um, no shade yeah. to, to, to former teammates, but we saw that they are capable of competing, at least online we saw, they're capable of competing with the best in the world. And I think even in the Furious series, you saw a much better oxygen. Uh, but that is me getting super excited, very enthusiastic, and, and just anticipating what could be greatness. It could be awesome. I mean, that, you know, if they were able to accomplish that, even if they go and lose in the grand finals and knock Carmen Corp out, that is something that we'll talk about for a long time because that's a great Carmen Core team. And we start terribly, horribly. We lose to power. Bro. What I tell you, Hoodie? What I tell you about the OCE? It's a little bit stronger than you think. You got to watch no, out for not. OCE. It's not, though. It's not. <laughs> it's not. We played terrible. Power didn't make mistakes, and they did what they needed to do, okay? I'm not trying to discredit them. They deserved that win. But they didn't outplay. We were horrendous. Yeah. We were terrible. We, I, I, here's what I think happened. And, you know, Snasky is the one that's talking to the team. I'm not in their head. They don't talk to me about that. You know, I, I give them encouragement and, you know, try to support them where I can. But that, you know, they're, we're not discussing how they feel and strategy and things like that. But my assumption is everything that I just described about why it's so exciting from a fan is weighing on them. You know, and, and and from a player perspective, you cannot, you can't think about that. You've got to play the game in front of you just like you would any other game. And I think that pressure of wanting to perform, I mean, you, you guys think about it. Oski and Joyo have had a rich history at Lands with success. Oski has been top four top many four times, yeah. right? Um, and, and straight away, like right out of the gate, as soon as he became a pro, he was already top eight, top four yeah. at Lands. You've got Joyo with wins, um, second place finishes. And they have not had the most successful last 12 months. And I think they see a lot of their peers, Ato with Carmi Corp, uh, you know, Rise and Batira for Joyo, finding plenty of success still. And I think they desperately wanted to show, hey, we're still here. We still got it. And then, like I said, I think you add in that story of got to make it to the grand finals. You add in Joyo returning to London. And then you add in just the pressure that like the season's over if they don't perform. I think it I I think unfortunately, I think they let that that stuff creep into their mind. And and you saw Oski's tweet after the game, they played not to lose, or they played to mm -hmm. not lose, however you want to phrase it. They didn't play to win. They didn't play confidently. And I think it was very apparent in the way that they played. I mean, they're look, again, no disrespect, but there's no way that they should be outpaced by power. Not that team. And they were. They, you know, they got outplayed in, in in most facets of the game because they were just not confident and not communicating well, 
not executing mechanically. And I think a lot of it was nerves. A again, I mm -hmm. want to make this very clear. This is not from the players. This is me speculating, just thinking about the scenario and, and even thinking about how I might respond in, in those shoes. Yeah. So, and I mean, uh, you could see it on the field, right? Sure. It, it's no shame to play a close game with power yep. because yes, they they're did show team. up. They're, they're a good team and they, I think I uh, quite underrated them, but it is, yeah, you did. It is not, you know, the oxygen level yeah, no. to lose to power in this fashion, one, three. I mean, that's right. not. And, and this is what I kept, this is what I kept saying, you know, once everything was all said and done, that loss. And obviously it hasn't, it, the, the rest of the tournament hadn't transpired yet, but that loss is what did it. Because mm. you think about Gen G and Furia, and, and there are some gentlemen, some BDS and all these, they ran into, and, and the reality is if we don't beat one of those teams one time throughout Swiss, then you don't deserve top eight, right? So I'm not, no. we didn't deserve it. But our problem was we ran into those teams in too late. Like Furia fell. Who, who did they lose to in round four? Do y'all remember? Uh, Space Station. So they lost a space no, station. Three, well, round three was space. It was um, no, they, they lost an upper round four to space yeah. station for sure. So, and then you had Gen G losing to G two in round four. So, though, like, I'm sure that those teams would like to win those, but they have that extra life. When when we started running into the tough talent, it was already round five. Mm -hmm. You know what well, I'm saying? Well, also. Uh, I was going to actually, I wanted to bring this up because I was watching, you know, noted G2 fanboy podcast, the Chalkcast the other day. And Rizzo brought up that he was like, oh, sometimes Swiss is boring to me, especially early on, because it feels like we just need to get it over with. But I think Oxygen personally was a striking evidence of the, of the other. And that the first round of Swiss is by far the most important. And the reason is, is that because in the one, one and two, two rounds, most likely you're going to, like you have to play a team that comes down from the right. upper round if you're in the low round, you're essentially fighting against the current the entire time. Yeah, 100%. Like when you go up to that 1-0, right? When you come down, there's a good chance you're playing an APAC team, an, an OCE team, SAM 2, MENA 2. But when you're going up in yeah. the 1 and the 1-2 rounds, you got to play another NAEU, you know, top MENA, top SAM team. Mm -hmm. And it can, it can kill your run. It can yeah. literally kill your run because you're running into, you know, Jason and you're running into... Furia, like when in the other side, you know, Gen G, for example, round five, but they won that first match. You know, they beat Oxygen, and then they get power round five, who just didn't look competitive. Yeah, we, we no, that's that's literally what happened when Oxygen lost to Gen G in round three. That's right, one to three. I mean, yep. if they manage to win there and go to the upper round four, even if you don't win that, which was exactly. considering the teams that were going to that upper round four, very likely that they were not going to win in round four. That Oxygen after you know playing Gen G in round three, we're going to go to round five either way yeah. through lower round four or through upper round four. But going there through upper means that you're playing a team, well not power, but secret maybe. Sure. Yeah. A twisted mind instead of maybe well a, a team secret instead of a Furia. Right. Th yeah. There's literally the, the... well I think the easiest way to say it is we just wasted our loss. Like that yeah. you know you don't you you don't have yeah, you just don't give yourself any wiggle room. So, yeah, yeah the power it was always going was to tough. be tough. Um, we bounced back and, and played gladiators and, and beat them 3 0 as we should. And I, I mean, I'm again, no disrespect, but I, I wasn't even impressed with that series either. You know, they got the win, but it still wasn't, it wasn't like a, a super dominant performance that was inspiring confidence. And then we fall into Gen G in the round three. The boogeyman. Say and, his uh, name. The boogeyman. We, uh, the series started great. I think it went one and one to kick yeah. things off. And um, and then Jason just started started. He he did some. He was he had he was on a mission. I think Vatira paid him off again, like he did in San Diego. <laughs> what the hell was that? He just turned into like prime prime rogue first killer for two games for no yeah, reason. Yeah. They, they they definitely played well. I still think that um, the guys were, you know, they still had that fear. I guess maybe fear is the easiest way to say it, that fear of losing instead of, you know, fully fully sending it and and just hoping for the best. Um, and then I think we finally began to find our footing in the Twisted Mind series, which again was still not super impressive, but it felt a little bit more confident. It felt more like oxygen. They were definitely more like foot on the gas instead of um, so patient and so, I guess, just lacking confidence in their movement and their control of the ball. And then by the time we got to Furia, I thought they actually played pretty good. They played some pretty good Rocket League. They should have concluded that in round four, and we're not going to make any excuse about the timeout 
uh, or not timeout, but like the, the pause. We're not gonna make an excuse about that. Um, they should they should finish that up. They're 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 and they Fury handed them a goal at zero seconds. That yeah. should not be a goal. Fury handed them a tying goal and gave that overtime to Oxygen. They should have put that away. They were up two one in the series. You got two more chances. There's no excuse. And so you know the the unfortunate reality is we didn't deserve top eight. We didn't and and you know you never know. Obviously things can turn around from Friday to Saturday. But if, if that's how they were going to play in the top eight, I don't think they were going to make it very far anyway. So. It was always going to be really tough. They're in this Absolutely. position where there's some teams like Gen.G, like Furia, who are just more favorites to make it far into the tournament than Oxygen. And if you're Oxygen and you're playing them, yeah, this is really tough. Like, yes, you can say that they got some confidence from playing Twisted Minds. Because, yes, obviously, sweeping Gladiators is not going to give you the confidence you need. You need a little bit more than that. But once you're lost against uh, Gen G and you're making it to that lower round four, I mean, it doesn't even really matter what you do against Twisted Minds while you have to win, but you're going to face Furia. I mean, you had Furia or BDS. Those are the two pe people you could have faced. Yeah, it was Furia I, or I, BDS. So either I don't way, know if you're, I mean, you feel confident either, either way. way. I mean, I think up. Oxygen also got kind of screwed by um, just SSG and how good they looked like they were supposed to be like kind of a clear top eight and then ssg was going to be that ninth team where sure. it's like yeah maybe well, we, they can sneak in round we, five we kind of spotted them too because we yeah. gave them power yeah and so it's like they should have been facing us but they i think because of that um and be, well space station right they took they took falcons to the brink right we all mm -hmm. i almost got that right from our predictions video i was a little upset when it didn't happen um, and then they beat Furia. Like, they yeah. beat the team Oxygen didn't beat. Yeah. And when you have a team that's supposed to be on the fence and, like, and they come out and they just play super well, that's a team that can't yeah. make it. There's another yeah. team that, sorry, they make it and There's now another no team can't make right. it. And so then it even puts more pressure on you because it's like, we thought there was going to be this eight spot that was going to be super up for grabs with teams exactly. around our level, right? right. The Secret, the Space Station, maybe OG, maybe Twisted Minds. Then one of those teams comes out and just flies through the Swiss, right? Looks really good even in their one loss. And now you're stuck trying to, now you're competing with BDS and Gen G, right? Like those are the last teams that yeah, you, yeah. you're seeing. And Furia. So there's four teams BDS, Gen G. Can you imagine if I told you, if I put in our prediction video and I had BDS, Oxygen, Gen G, and Furia all in round five, you guys would be like, you're insane. We're not doing that. <laughs> Veto, yeah, this, yeah. Right? It's just what happens. Yeah, yeah right. right? So it, it's goes. tough. It's tough when another team comes through and really plays strong and, and you're yeah. and that underperformance that you have <laughs> early starts mm -hmm. to magnify even more. Yeah, yeah, magnify for sure. Well, I, um, you know, I, what I will say is I'm, I'm proud of the way that they handled, um, I mean, I hate to say, but failure. That's what it was. You know, it was, they did not achieve what they wanted to achieve, even if, even if we set that line at top eight, right? We, we failed to, to do that. So I'm proud of the way that they, they handled that. Um, you know, I have seen in the past, and we have seen even in the community, because sometimes this blows up publicly, but we have seen teams just completely explode um, mm -hmm. after underperformances, and, and the guys still did not, they did not behave that way. They, they they still have confidence in one another, and I think they are um, optimistic about their 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 future with with one another. So I think um, I think that displays a level of maturity, uh, despite the rough showing at the at the major. We do well, have we do have one highlight though. Yes. Oxygen Hootie Who took home a W. A trophy was had. A trophy <laughs> was had for Oxygen Esports. As, Den as Denzel Washington once said, I'm leaving here with some. <laughs> Hootie Who, and I'll say it because yeah, I don't want you to have to pat yourself on the back because you deserve <laughs> all the pats on the back. Hootie Who, our Hootie Who, shift cast Hootie Who. That's the came one. Came first mm. in the most important part of the, the week. most important. Dazarin's uh, global dap up power rankings top and when i saw that tweet show up in my timeline i was like that's my guy that's my boy hootie who just just showing up and performing listen maybe his there was nerves Amazing. on joyo there's nerves yep. on oski there were no nerves on hootie who when he saw dazarin just i know that sound was probably so clean Chris. fingers perfectly interlocked <laughs> so hootie winner's interview okay how yeah. does it feel after all the work you've put in you know, 90 past two last oh, yeah. last few weeks. Mm -hmm. How do we feel about, you know, finally taking on the dub after after all these years? You know, it does feel good. Uh, as, a, as a resident in North American, we don't take many dubs in the Rocket League world. So we'll take them, whether it's a dap up competition. Start to change, it seems. That's right. Had a double it, this week. Right. Double last London week. London was a, a catalyst 
for yeah. the, the future results. Exactly. NA is about to take control. French, uh -oh. francophone, I don't mm -mm. think so. That's it's coming back to North American soil. We got the DAPA. I don't know. By the way, I don't know if you saw, I think it was like the top four. Yeah. Was all uh, Americans. So they shake hands in Europe, apparently. I don't know. I don't know what they're doing over there. Y'all got to get your DAP game up. That's for sure. No, it feels great. You know, it feels great. I, I think this is also one for our old boomers. Yep. You know, back in the day when you used to go outside and actually give high fives. Now we just sit in here, grab our controller, yeah. and game yeah. it GG. up all day. You GG. just press GG. GG. Press G twice. <laughs> <laughs> what controller is that, Hoodie? Oh, that is the uh, Rust Master eSwap X Pro no controller. You should, uh, oh. you should report Bestie Who. Go to, go to twitch.tv forward slash Hootie Who. All right. And I want you to go to the About section and click my link. Buy one, Amazing. Of, buy one of these controllers. We are twinning. You know, I, I need a new controller soon anyway. I don't use it much anymore, but it is absolutely broken. So I'm going to be doing that. I'm oh, and, we're uh, twinning, I mean, Hootie. Amazing. Um, if, you, if you like the Xbox form factor, they're pretty neat. Yeah, uh, depending on the I version like that you that. get, like you can you can pop out the sticks, which is like nice. crazy. So if you get stick drift, you know, you can fix that, that up there. So yeah. they're, they're I did guess cool. the, the moment I booted up Rocket League after coming back from London, yeah. stick drift. Oh no. But hey, yeah, I could, swap, I could swap it out. So yeah. One you could yeah, that's right. You can swap you can swap left to right, but you can also just buy a new stick pack for 20 bucks. Yeah, actually it fixed itself. I just had to use it for a bit, go in oh, free play, and nice. uh, it's good again. Yeah, anyway, yeah, listen, we, congratulations. We'll take one dub, NA on top. Yeah. Two dubs in NA, yeah. for NA. One more important one, obviously. Uh, Hootie, showing everybody how to greet another uh, in, 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 in just a, a really impressive and respectful way, and you got to love that. Right, right. Um, I one hope thing I can make Hootie, it to if, if, Dallas for yeah. uh, Worlds so if, I can actually Yen's learn the ways of Dallas. the dub. <laughs> yeah, if Jens goes to Dallas, first thing it's it's a there's a P at the end, not a B. It's a very common misconception. <laughs> oh, the did I say is dab? this is this the popular dance? Yeah, did I say dab? Like I mean, you got I that dab, of course. Yeah, exactly. But yeah, the art of the dab. Uh, Hootie will be giving Jens. I don't need it, obviously. I'm from North obviously. America. We just we do this normal. But I, I Hootie, will you take Jens under of your wing? Uh, of course, I'll, I'll give out some freebies right now. Here's what, I, here's what I'm going to tell you. Number one, you can't be limp, okay? I saw way no. too many limp hands. Talk. I don't know what the heck is going on. you got to get a cup. There's yeah. got to be something to make some landing, noise, catch some air. Spot. It needs and then to be landing spot. Ian's already got it right there. Now, here's the thing. And look, I even got a target. When you are, when you are approaching someone, you can't be looking at their eyes, their hair, their yeah. shoes. you got to be hand. looking at what you're doing. Look at the elbow, okay? Mm -hmm. That is going to be your key. You look at the elbow. Give it a nice – you don't want to go too, uh, too straight. Mm -hmm. Or too high, you gotta be a nice, nice 45 degree angle right in the middle. Eat it there with a good clap. Okay, okay. okay. All right. This should be behind Again, a paywall. Elbow. I don't know why you're giving this up for free. Because we want more good daps. All right. I, I'm telling you, it was weak, man. It's weak sauce over there. We got. I don't know what is the deal with the noodle hands. Yeah. I don't know what is going on. on with that. Put some weight. Maybe, maybe because there. everyone's looking at your hair, so they're not looking at your elbow. It's well, true. now it's gone. So. <laughs> um. But yeah. Thank you guys. You know, I got to I got to have my own personal major because I didn't have to listen to you guys tell me that I was wrong for two hours. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, listen, uh, it's cool to have different perspectives as a creator, as a media member. Um, you know, we've heard from different players. We've heard from casters on other on other podcasts. So it's cool. It's cool that we have such like a comprehensive review of like what an RLCS yeah. major is really like. And it's good because now there's such a, a, a vast library of sort of things for our blast to take from and, and and pull the strengths out and and for get sure. rid of the weaknesses thank you for watching this segment of the shift cast again you can catch the full episode here on our youtube channel or on spotify thank you for watching